Hi, welcome to Mr. Otter Studio. Today I'm going to be showing you how to paint a watercolor flower. We are going to be painting a jasmine. And this tutorial is special for two reasons. And the first one is, I haven't filmed a watercolor flower for a long time and I've had a lot of requests. And the second reason is because I'm actually doing this tutorial for someone named Jasmine. And she's actually stuck in her apartment in Hong Kong with her sister and her parents. And she's an artist. She came to visit me last summer and I told her I would make her a tutorial because she said she watched my videos. So this one is for you, Jasmine. Hope you're hanging in there. It's probably hard being stuck in your apartment, uh, not being able to go anywhere, but I'm sure soon you guys will be able to get out of there. <laughs> this craziness will stop. It is currently, uh, March 2020 and the coronavirus is spreading around the world and um, hasn't hit too hard in the United States yet where I am but I do know that people are going pretty crazy buying all of the paper towels at Costco which I don't understand but that I guess it's an emergency we all have things we like and we all have things we want so anyway um, whether you're a beginner or you've been painting for a while, hopefully you can find something helpful in today's tutorial. All you need are basic watercolor supplies. All you need is a piece of watercolor paper, and I'm using Mr. Otter Studio's watercolor paper. A scratch piece of paper to test your colors out on. Water, watercolors, a paper towel for blotting your brush off, a paintbrush, and I'm just using a number 10. And this is actually the one that comes with our watercolors. So this is a great one to use. I'm gonna use it for the whole thing. If you want, you can use a flat brush for the background, so it'll cover a lot more. But I'm just gonna use one brush for this one. So again, this is a number 10 round. A pencil for sketching it out. And I'm gonna be using some tape. Now, I did hear from a professional watercolor artist that you should not use this tape. You should use painter's tape. They actually have special tape that watercolor people can use, but I'm just gonna use this because that's what I have. <laughs> but maybe one day I'll show you the difference between this and the, the real tape. Maybe it won't tear my paper as much as this tape does. And that's it. We are ready to get started. The first thing we want to do is to sketch the flower. So today we're going to be painting a flower that has multiple blooms. I'm going to break it down into simple shapes so that we're gonna draw this together, we'll paint it in. So here's my paper. I'm just gonna take my tape and tape a quick border. You can do that, you can draw a border with your pencil, you don't even need a border. It just helps, number one, it helps me keep my paper on the table from moving around. And I just like the border that it gives me. Okay, once you have your border on there, um, let's go ahead and start with our pencil. So grab your pencil. The drawing that we're going to be doing is basically three big jasmine blooms and then three little buds next to it. So we're gonna start with the biggest one, which is down over here. And we're gonna bring it almost all the way to the edge. So I'm just gonna draw a circle. It's coming into the middle of the paper. It's just gonna to wanna to put a big circle in this side and draw really, really lightly. This is going to be a sketch. So you wanna draw almost so light that you don't have to erase any of your lines. I'm gonna draw a little darker just so you can see it. And then we're gonna draw the next biggest bloom and it kind of overlaps it. So we can draw the center of it is kind of right here. Well, it actually is down in here, but if we were drawing a circle, it'd be like around that point. So we're just gonna draw this bloom that's coming up in this direction, so just this circle. And then the third one is down here kind of smashed in. You're almost drawing like a, more of an oval, definitely not really a circle. And it doesn't come as low as this one, so just about. So just make sure that you're not bringing that circle lower than this one so you know that this one is the biggest, heaviest part. And then the buds are just gonna be, there's one here, there's a big one up here, and they're just in the shape of an egg and there's one right behind it. If it helps, you can just draw it right over the top and then just erase this out. So pretty easy so far, right? We only have six circles there, six circles and ovals. And now we're gonna start by putting some of these petals in. And we're going to start with this one right here just because it's the biggest. And we're going to draw, let's see, there's four main petals that I can see and they're kind of going in a cross like this at a diagonal, all right? So the first one is we're gonna bring them just into the middle. There's going to be some petals in here, but for now, let's just focus on these main large petals that we can see. So these petals, they're almost in the shape of a leaf. They come to a point and then they're kind of circular and then they curve in. So the same thing right here, it's gonna come out, curve into a point and then come in. And then this one's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna come out into a point and then come back in and then this one. So we've basically made like an X out of these petals. Let's go ahead and drop in a petal right behind these two. So I'm just gonna bring this in 
down and then over. So it's just kind of tucked in and then we're gonna bring another one in between these. And this one's kind of coming out in that direction a little bit behind that one. And then there's another petal in between these two. And then this one actually has one, it's a little different right here. So there's one that comes right behind it, almost matching up to it. And then there's one smashed in here and it's pretty long. And then down here, there's just one behind these. And then there's actually one tucked in between these two. They were kind of just going around and this one comes a little bit behind this one instead of smack in the center. If it looks too symmetrical, just remember that some of these petals are kind of behind, like this one's more behind and closer to this one. Now we need to figure out what's going on in the center of this flower. So there's this cool little bud that's kind of going to the side right here. So how to draw this is you're gonna just start by drawing a circle right here. And then you're gonna bring two lines back into the center like that. And then there's a petal that's smashed right here. You're gonna make it flat on the top and then it actually comes, just draw a V over the top and that is curling in. And then there's another petal that's doing the same thing right here. So it's flat on the top and then it's just kind of curving in like that. And then there's one more petal right here behind this that's kind of, it's hard to say, but I think it's curving in as well. And you could add one in here. It seems like there should be one, but I can't see one. So we have this kind of weird bud right here and then these other shapes. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and erase these lines that I used to draw it with. Let's wait till the end to do that. All right, now let's start with this flower right here. I'm just gonna draw a little dot where the center of this flower is. And then we're gonna draw the main petals that we can see and then we'll draw a few that come in the middle here because we can't really see. There's not like a center almost like this one. So the first one is just coming up and it's making that same shape and then coming down. The second one is gonna come over to the side. So it's almost like we're gonna draw three that are going like this. So that like in the middle of a triangle. And then this one's kind of flatter because it's coming towards us. So I should say rounder when we draw it. And the same thing with this one. It's really, really flat. All right, now in between these two, there's one that's up in this direction. And then we're gonna do the same thing behind these. We're gonna draw this big petal that's coming up. Really, really strong, beautiful petal right there. In between these two, let's go ahead and draw one that's coming up in this direction. And then there's all sorts of beautiful petals right in here. So I'm gonna draw the first one. It's coming up in this direction. And then the second one is kind of in front of it and coming down. And then next to this one, there's just one petal that's coming up and then another petal right here that's coming down. And now we've got to draw in between these two petals. So the one behind this one is actually just tucked close to it. It's almost like a little copycat. And then there's gonna be one that's coming out to the side, more triangular and then a tiny little one that's tucked in between these two. So it almost looks like a lotus flower actually. And then there's a pretty big petal behind this one. It actually starts on this petal and then comes down, overlaps this one, and then comes back under. And then the same thing right here behind this petal, there's one big one that's coming back and kind of just overlapping. It's actually behind this petal. So this one's coming over, this one's coming behind. And then there's a tiny little petal in here. And then we can see this bud, this kind of circular shape, and it comes to a point here. So I'm just gonna draw a few little triangles up in here or like a dot with some lines coming out because this is the top of that bud. And then just a tiny little one that's tucked in right here. So these are those little baby flowers <laughs> that are just, we'll draw this one in a minute. So there's these two and there's actually some pretty strong leaves that are coming out here pretty straight. The petals in the center are curved up. So we basically have a circular shape here and then it's coming up into a point. So these are like a weird shaped circle petals. And then this one is the same thing as well. It just comes up a little higher. So I'll erase this so you can kind of see what's happening here. Um, there is one that's coming in front of this petal right here. So we basically just have these two petals overlapping each other. Now this flower, we're going to start by drawing the petals that are coming up this way. So the center is about right here. There is this big petal that's coming all the way to the end and curving down. And then overlapping it is the second petal coming up at a point and then ending back down in the same spot. And these ones get a little crazy. And this is the cool thing about these flowers. This one comes out kind of straight and then curves back in and tucks behind this petal. I'll erase this line just so you can tell this is in front. And then we have this petal and all of these are gonna be behind these other petals. It's coming in and overlapping and then there's a big petal that comes all the way over almost to this one. And it starts about halfway up this petal. Also, by now, if you've kind of just figured out the shape of this flower and you just wanna go ahead and start drawing, go for it. You don't, I mean, clearly, this flower was probably different two seconds later because of the light. So don't feel like yours has to look exactly like mine. 
And then there's just two petals that fit in here. There's one on top of this one, it's pretty thin. And then there's just another little one we can see just tucked behind this. And then there's two petals right here. So I'm just gonna draw the first one and it ends behind this and the second one just kind of by itself. And let's hurry and draw this bud in right here. Just tucks right in. Now erase the lines that you don't want to use in the painting, so any of the circle lines. Hopefully that wasn't too many. There's a lot of petals. This may have the most petals that I've ever drawn. Go ahead and use your eraser. Just erase out any of those lines you don't want to see. Once you start painting, it's pretty hard to erase pencil under watercolor. Anywhere you have petals overlapping is a place that I would erase. Okay, look at it and make sure you understand what's going on. There isn't any confusing parts. I really want to just drop a petal in right here, so I'm going to. It just seems like it needs something right there. This is a really great flower to practice on because it's white and basically white and green. Those are the two colors that I can see on this. So now we're gonna get ready to start painting. I'm just gonna draw on some of these petals a little bit um, darker so you can see them. And again, if yours don't look like this, it's totally fine. All right, now let's get set up for our painting. If you're left-handed, go ahead and set up your paints on the left side of your paper. I'm right-handed, so I'm just gonna put all of my paints over here. If you order my paper on my website right now, you will get a free watercolor set with it. So you can get two packs of paper, brushes, and one of these praying watercolor sets. So it's a pretty good deal, and I have a very limited supply. If you're interested, go to mrotterstudio.com and go ahead and grab your paints. All right, so get your watercolor paint, your paper towel, and your water. In watercolor, we paint light to dark typically, so that's what we're going to be doing in this. So we're gonna start with a really, really light, almost yellowy green. So let's make a big puddle. And the reason we make puddles in watercolor instead of just dipping right into here, I'm just gonna kinda activate some of these colors I'm gonna use really quick and put water on them. The reason that we use a big puddle is so I can, you can keep your colors consistent and you don't run out <laughs> while you're painting it. So this is probably big enough to cover all of the flowers, but I am gonna make it just a little bit even bigger because this is the pool that I'm gonna to use to paint all of the colors with. So just drop some water in there with your watercolor paintbrush. And first, we could use black or we could use um, green with some orange would be a nice color. Uh, we could also use brown would be good with green. I think that's a really nice kind of gray, but red and green make a nice gray as well but there's definitely green, so I'm just gonna drop that in there. And definitely, I'm gonna add a little bit of brown to it. So when I paint it, this is kind of the tone that I get. So I'm gonna take this color. This is the color I see in the, in the buds, so I'm just gonna paint that over them. They have a little bit more of a green kinda, I don't wanna say flavor, but tone. And then I'm gonna grab some blue and stick it in here. So then there you have that bluish color. Okay, now I've just mixed a little bit of blue in with it and I'm gonna go ahead and paint all of the petals. There are some parts that are pretty white that I might just not even touch. And that would be this petal, this petal, part of this petal, and maybe this petal right here. So go ahead and start and you can just start painting those petals in with that color. You can just leave some totally white areas too if you would like. These are, have a little bit more white on them. Try not to scrub your paper. Uh, that scrubbing will actually start to tear through your paper. And what we're gonna do now is just build up some tones. I'm gonna add a little bit more blue to this and green. I'm gonna add a little red. I just wanna see. Uh, it makes it a little bit too purple. So instead, I'm just gonna grab some brown. And then we get this really nice gray color. So it's just blue. That's a really good shadow, actually, for these flowers. Okay, but Painting that on this is gonna look really dark. I mean, you can see it next to that color. When we do use it, we're going to be blending it with our brush, and we're gonna be, um, I'll show you how to make some of the edges a little bit soft and some of the other edges a little bit harder. And we're gonna start with these petals that are in the back. These petals that are kind of pushed away. It's a little bit darker underneath. So I'm just kind of painting these outer petals. And you wanna be careful because this one right here actually is really light. So I don't wanna paint that one in, just going around this flower. The bottom side of this petal, this is gonna show you kinda of how to blend a little bit. This one's still kind of wet, so I'm just gonna leave it alone for a little bit. There is some shadow on this petal right here, so it's in, right underneath these. So I'm just gonna paint a little bit of this dark color on there. Now watch what I do with this edge. So I don't want it to look stripy, so I just kinda of blot my brush off, and then I just kinda of soften up that edge by painting over it with water. 
And I think we probably need to do the same thing on this petal right here. So add the shadow underneath. And then let's just see what happens if we just touch the paper towel and then just kind of soak that up right there. So we still have a shadow, but it's not so, it doesn't have such a uh, dark contrast. And then this petal actually has a shadow kind of along the bottom side of it and in here. So then just touch your paintbrush on your paper towel, soften it up. So we're just gonna go petal by petal. This petal does have a little bit of a shadow underneath here and here, just a tiny bit though. So I'd be careful on this one. We wanna keep it really bright. And then this shadow, this petal is really shaded. So if you get too much paint on there and it's too dark, just blot your paintbrush off. And I kinda like that really light area along that, so I'm just gonna leave it. And you can go ahead, like in the middle of this spiral, it's gonna be dark, so I'm just gonna paint that in with my shadow color. And then on the bottom part of this, the light is kind of coming from this direction, if that makes sense. And then there's gonna be a shadow underneath this, because remember this petal is kind of curving over. So what I'm doing is painting the shadow, and then I'm just blotting my paintbrush off and just going along the edge and softening it. So softening it up a little bit in here. And then I'm gonna just come behind this one, so on the left side of this petal. So basically what you're gonna do is just go around, look at your petals and do they have some kind of form on them. Like this one really should be coming in front of that back petal. It just doesn't look like it is. <laughs> <coughs> and this one kind of actually, uh, there's a shadow under here. And there would be a shadow actually on the back side of this one and a little bit in the middle. And definitely on the underside of this one, you would see the shadow on this side. And on this petal, there is a little bit of a shadow right in the middle. So if it looks a little bit too stripy, just go ahead and soften the sides up. All right, so you're just gonna wanna dip in your colors and dip in that shadow color and just keep adding dimension, I guess, to these petals. And really what you're trying to do is separate them. So if there's a part where your petals look like they're one petal and there's a few there, then you might need to come back in with your paint and add some shadows. And over on this side, these petals definitely have shadows. I mean, this is underneath that top one. So there's definitely a shadow here. As you watch me, just I'm kind of just separating the petals, getting my watercolors um, very subtly. This kind of reminds me of the peony, the white peony that we painted with those just kind of very subtle shades. And then I'm just gonna add the same color, it just looks darker, over the top to add some more of these shadows. This top petal is kind of curved back, so there's actually a shadow in here and then like two kind of creases inside of it. So it's a little bit different actually than these other ones. So this next layer is just gonna add a little bit of a darker shadow and any texture that you want on these petals. So even if you can't see the texture on some of them, that doesn't mean you can't add it. These aren't stiff leaves, so I'm just taking this shadow color and I'm just going over these in a few different areas to add a little bit of depth and form so that they don't look just like, um, oh, I know there's flowers that have petals like this, but these petals seem a little bit thinner and delicate. All right, so I've added, added just a little bit of texture to the leaves by making some indications of texture coming out from the center. Some of the shadows are more green, some of them are a little bit more dark brown black. So I'm just darkening up those colors. Some of the shadows are more green, some of them are a little bit more dark brown black. Uh, so I'm just darkening up those colors and we'll see what this looks like. So I can show you, it's a little bit green. All right, now I'm gonna look at the darkest, darkest parts. So there's definitely darker shadows in here. Separating these, this petal is darker. Uh, this petal is much darker. And we have some darker areas on this. Don't start outlining your petals. We're really just adding some of the darkest shadows that we can see. And they're not gonna be on every petal. They might be, but they probably aren't. This is a great time to separate petals if you feel like some of them are coming together and you don't like it. Um, this is a great time to just 
pull them apart with these shadows. That's enough on the flowers. Now let's get a little bit more green. Right here, I'm just gonna mix up some yellow with some green, more yellow, <laughs> a tiny bit of brown. So that is really saturated and bright. Actually, that's totally the color of these petals right here. So right here, I'm just gonna add a little bit more um, yellow and water. So it kind of looks like this. And I'm just gonna add a tiny bit of that green onto these petals, just on this left kind of shadow side. I mean, and you can bring, if you look, there are some hints of this color inside of the flower, especially like right in here, there's like this little bit of green, but we'll just keep it over there for now. You can kind of smooth it out if you want. Let's add a little bit of shading to it. Even though it's um, wet, it's fine to add those colors in. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab this bright green. This was just green with a lot of yellow, and I'm gonna go ahead and paint in these, these little stems. All right, now that is really it for the flowers. The background is really gonna make these pop off the paper. So this is the really fun part. You can paint the background whatever color you want. I'm gonna do a nice bold black um, and green. So I'm gonna maybe use this green. I just need to make it a little bit more saturated and I'm gonna mix up my black right here. This would be a good time to use a bigger brush, like a flat brush to get a nice flat wash in there. I'm gonna paint this all with one paintbrush because I know some of you don't have two. And really like a pitch black would be super nice um, to paint as the background. This looks black, but it's actually, oh, that is actually really dark. That's great, actually, a really nice and juicy color. All right, okay, never mind. that is a great black. So it looks like the black is ready, and now I just need to get this green a little bit darker. So I'm adding more pigment to it, and a little bit more brown. And there's just gonna be a few parts where I start kind of mixing these two together. But before we paint out the outside of it, I think it's good to just put some of the color inside. So go ahead and grab some of that black. Use your paper towel. You don't wanna have a ton of paint on your brush when you're doing a small area. So I just have a little bit of, I have some paint on my brush and I'm just gonna paint in some of these areas inside. So any of these areas that are going to be shadows, and this is also going to help separate some of these petals and some of these flowers from each other. And hopefully everything is dry by the time you start this, it should be. All right, now take those two colors and go ahead and paint your background. And you can just use one color if you want, or you can use two. If you're left-handed, I think it's easier to start on the right side. If you're right-handed, it's easier to start on the left side so you're not like dragging um, your hand over your painting. I'm just gonna make sure my tape is nice and sealed and start. I'm trying to get this on as quickly as possible. And you can bring green in whenever you want. Okay, and then I'm dipping in my green right now. And it's okay to get some little white areas like that. I think it actually looks kind of cool. If you're worried about the colors mixing, you can just leave like a, you kind of want to think about your edges at this point. So the flower edges are really nice and sharp, but maybe the edges that I'm gonna have down here are going to be a little bit looser, okay. Now I'm gonna to wanna to come work in this area right here because I still have wet paint. So did you see how I used that puddle to kind of just like draw from to continue on painting this? If it dries, it just gets a little, I mean, I don't like my background to draw attention to itself. And if you have wet paint over dry paint, there's gonna be a harsh line there and I don't want that to show. Okay, now once you get your background painted, I'm just gonna to touch up any you don't wanna go back in and scrub it, but if you see any light areas you wanna take out. <clears throat> now I'm just gonna let this, um, while this is drying actually, I'm gonna take my paintbrush and I'm gonna make sure, I, th I see an area in here of background that I forgot to paint. So right under this flower, right in between these two, there's actually a shadow. Um, and let's just see if there's any, like right in here probably, yep. Okay, and any other areas in here that you see that you want to be even a little bit darker, you can go ahead and grab one of your darkest colors and pull out some of those details. So I might do that on some of my flowers. I might do that on some of my, of these buds up here. So remember, you're not trying to outline, you're just, I kind of sometimes look at it with my eyes blurred a little bit and see if there's anything that's coming together too much. And then I just think, you know, I look at the shadows and try to figure out And that's it. So I, if there's any parts that are bothering you, like for me, I just wanna come into these flowers a little bit, the buds. 
I don't want to add too much detail, but there's just these little triangle like shapes on the top that I'm going to put in with some green. And then I kind of like this kind of stuff to happen. So I'm just going to let it go, let it dry. Once yours is dry, take the tape off, sign it, and you are finished. Thank you so much for painting with me today on Mr. Otter Studio. I hope that was helpful for you. And Jasmine, I hope that you do it all right. Hang in there. Um, we're thinking about you and the rest of you. If anybody else watching this tutorial is stuck in your apartment or house, trying to stay healthy, or hopefully you're not sick, but if you are, that you're getting better. And thank you so much for joining me on Mr. Otter Studio. I hope you have a wonderful day. Jasmine, hang in there. Things. I'm sure are going to get better.